Hi Taurus, great to see you. Come on in. Uh, I've just been doing some spiritual work, but when I pull these cards, I'll bring the lamp across and shine them down onto the cards so that you can see them with me while I'm doing the reading for you. But I want the, um, the rest of the room to stay quite uh, subdued because I am in the mood and in the mood to do your Taurus 2020 yearly reading forecast. And as you know, I use a lot of astrology and numerology and mysticism as well as uh, the Tarot. And of course, um, you can find uh, my monthly readings. Just search for me and your star sign and you'll uh, see your monthly readings if you don't want to subscribe. But of course, if you do subscribe, then you get to see everything. Let's see what there is for you this year, shall we? Let's see what there is for you in 2020. I'm going to draw a card for each month of the year. You'll see them before I do. There is the Magician. What a fantastic card to start with for you. There's the Eight of Cups. Three of Discs. The Knight of Cups. You're going to love the artwork in these cards, I think. I sure do. Wow, the Three of Wands. That's a startling... Have a look at that. That's a startling looking card, isn't it? Wait till you see what it has to say. One, two, three, four, five. May is June. The Ten of Discs. Wow, that's always a great card to have. You're going to appreciate that in particular, I think, Taurus. There's the Two of Discs. That's another really interesting looking card, isn't it? The Two of Discs for July. Here we have the Four of Cups. What's this one here? The Knight of Discs. And from here, what is this? The Six of Discs. What's this one on the top? Let's have a look at that. That's for November. Ooh, the Wheel of Fortune. Wonder what that has got to say for you. Spin that Wheel of Fortune. And finally for December, we have the Hermit. How very interesting. Okay, I'll bring the lamp across, shine them on the cards. You sit down here next to me and I'll do your yearly reading for 2020. Okay, Taurus, now here we are as we drew them. This is from January through to June and July through to December. Let's look at this first card, which is that of January. And this is the Magician. The Magician who I call the Magus of Power. As the Fool card in the Tarot deck represents nothing, this card here actually represents infinity. And these two trees, to me, represent the doorway between the spiritual world and the world of matter. And this magician has come into the world that matter of matter rather with a Metatron's cube. Metatron is the most senior of the archangels and what this is saying to you now is that this is the time to make things happen because you have the energy to start to make things happen. The Magus of Power. Well I see the planet Mercury, that of swiftness and intelligence and communication associated with this energy here. And the element of the earth that I find here is gold. I think that he is coming now to say, actually these words are just coming through to me as I see this card. What word compares to your unending universe of love? O oh, plant your word in the chalice of my heart, and I will bear you children that shall walk the pathways of the stars, and shall know the Father that begat them. Yeah. Action. Power. Manifestation of ideas and desires. Willpower. Mm, quite a smooth talker, I think, that you will be during this period of January. You will have the gift of the gab, as they call it. 
And there's a strong energy around here of self-employment or being resourceful, self-relying on your own resources to get things to happen, I think. You'll have a great sense of timing and flexibility in all aspects of communications. Very gifted in the visual arts, I think. That is um, not just in painting or in video making or in movie making, or but it can also relate, I think, to things to do with fashion. It can be to do with hair or makeup and making things beautiful, perhaps around the house, perhaps even in a garden, I think. Um, gifted, I think, and have a great interest in music. You are somebody, I think, in this period who's going to be a very good mediator, and you may well find people coming to you to seek your advice as to how to get things done, how to sort out problems that they're having with somebody else. And I think you'll give that advice, and I think you'll give that advice to them very diplomatically. Um, very much the idea of mass media and public relations around here. You will have a great ability to see people's communication patterns in here. And I think that communication, speaking, putting ideas across is going to be a great skill of yours during the period of January. And you are going to start wanting to get things to happen. I'd have this thought in mind. I create magic when I use my inherent gifts and talents. I honour the resources of skilled communication which are within me. Yeah, a lot of energy coming in here. A great start to the calendar year 2020. We come here then to the Eight of Cups in February. And I'm getting the feeling here that with this Eight of Cups... Perhaps you're feeling that, oh, some of these ideas that you have in January to get things moving, things aren't moving fast enough. It's almost as if there is something in you saying that, oh, they should be going quicker. And there, therefore, you start thinking to yourself, oh, well, what's the use? Why should I bother? Why should I bother putting the effort into it? Maybe I was wrong. Well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. In fact, I'm looking at this image here, and here we have what looks like a young woman, perhaps even a child, with, holding around her this cloak of a lion. Now, I'm reminded of the Greek mythology involving a character called Heracles, who we come to know these days as Hercules. Now, in the Greek mythology, in the ancient Greek religion, the king of the gods, Zeus, had an affair, or had sex, actually, with a mortal woman. What's her name? I think it was Al Alchemy or Al Alchemy or something like that, and it just escapes me at the moment. But what Zeus, the king of the, do the gods, did was he transformed himself into the likeness of the woman's husband. And then he said, well, okay, I'm coming in here, I'm home, and I'm having sex with you. Now, this is unbeknownst to the woman, of course, because her real husband, who was a general, was off fighting battles to help protect the state that they were living in at the time. Anyway, of course, she gets pregnant. Now, in due course, of course, Zeus's wife, Hera, the queen of the gods, finds out about this, and of course, she goes absolutely demented, and she does everything in her power to try and prevent the child Hercules from being born. Anyway, she was unsuccessful at that and the child was born. And then when the child was a toddler, she sent a poisonous snake to him to kill him. But the child grabbed the snake, which was a strong snake, and he, using a strength far greater than any other child of his age, strangled it and killed it. And so his reputation began to grow from that moment. And he lived a glorious life, half man, half God. We've heard that before, haven't we, as an adult. And uh, he is the same Hercules as the Hercules of the Twelve Labors of Hercules, the first labor of which was to kill the Nemean lion. Now, that lion had a skin which was impervious to arrows, to spears, and to swords. And so Hercules had a hard time doing it until he determined to use his strength, and he strangled the lion to death, whereupon he skinned the beast 
and wore the skin around him for protection. And I feel that this is what's happening to you during this period. You have almost the, the cloak of divine protection. You are being protected and looked after in the month of February. For me, Astral, I call this card really the Lord of Abandoned Success because the ideas I think that you are coming up with here you are now starting to say, oh, maybe I should give them up. But this card is coming here to say, don't do that. Now, why is it having that type of an effect on you? Well, I think it's because it's, for me, the astrology is Saturn ruling the first decan of Pisces, that 19th to the 29th of February. Well, Saturn is all about structure and organization, discipline. It's heavy energy and responsibility. Pisces, on the other hand, is intuitive, spiritual, involved in fantasy and emotional. And Saturn comes in and deadens completely the waters of Pisces. Saturn dominates and suffocates the joy of Pisces. And also there is, for me, the flightiness of Mercury, because in this number eight here, the Eight of Cups, I have mystically associated with it the planet of Mercury, which is a flighty, communicative planet. Mercury is present, so the overall influence resembles a dark Saturn with no growth, almost like a stagnation. Now, the other thing is that, as I say, I have Saturn in Pisces in the card, Mercury in the number, but Mercury is in detriment in Pisces, in ordinary astrology, so we have, well, we have um, conflict here as well. Really, there's a feeling of obstruction or an emotional blockage, I, I feel. Um, really, it's, um, it, it, it's, a, it's an issue there which uh, is one which is like, it's, it's that energy of things aren't happening fast enough for you. But they are going to happen, as we will get to in just a moment. I think that there's a feeling here that you could have the feeling of, oh, a bit sense of stagnation, perhaps. Almost like you've got no, no interest in people or your friends. Almost as if it's sort of like a, a self-martyrdom where you deny yourself pleasure. A lack of get up and go, which may be a reaction to feeling empty, because these things that you were talking about here haven't happened overnight. Well, of course, things don't happen overnight, but they do happen. And the rest of these cards is showing what a tremendous year you do have coming forward for you in this year. There is an angel associated with this energy. And the angel's name is one of the 72 names of God. I won't go into how they're derived, but suffice it to say they are originally to be uh, derived from a book of Exodus, which is in the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament of the Christian Bible. And it's um, chapter 14, verses 19 to 21. And the angel's name is Riahael, Riahael. Now that energy is associated with another book in that Old Testament called the Book of Psalms. And the angel's name substitutes for the word of Lord in Psalm 16, chapter 5, which says, The Lord is my allotted share and portion. You control my fate. You control my fate. Now, meditating on that verse and on that angel's name, you will find that with every step you take and each moment that passes, you will feel comfort, confidence, and a stronger sense of direction. Good things coming to you. Maybe a feeling of being overly tired or drained, depleted, exhausted. I think there can sometimes also be for you, Taurus, a tendency to overgive or to randomly sort of overextend yourself. Yeah, this is a warning card, I think, really, for you not to... You give so much. This is a warning, really, not to overextend yourself to the point of exhaustion. Um, there may well be a depletia, uh, depletion, really, in this... Pisces month, which of course is the 19th of February to the 20th of March. 
and February of course that Pisces period starts in here or you may need to set limits with a Pisces person is what I'm getting also now here in um, March proper we have what we have the three of discs well I love the number three the number three is all about oh it's about extension it's about development it's about uh, 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 gestation it's about growing things and growth within yourself and growth of things outside of yourself and I call this card the Lord of material work the astrology of it for me esoterically is March is Mars in the second decan of Capricorn that 3rd of January to the 12th of January type of period. Now Mars is energy, assertion and vitality and Capricorn is about ambition, practicality and move, making things tangible. Now the good thing is, is that in ordinary astrology, Mars is also exalted in Capricorn. So the energy of Mars here in this card is very constructive. And it's constructive because it's in this situation with Capricorn. And so it's, ra it's, uh, it, it's work that it does is good rather than being its, its usual quite destructive self. Capricorn's materialism benefits from the energy and activity of Mars. So this card signifies that investing time and effort in work, however broadly you may want to consider that term, it signifies that investing time and effort in work will turn out favorably for you. Now I'm getting new jobs, uh, I'm getting career satisfaction, doing a good job, continued progression, productivity, teamwork. I also see you consulting with other people, perhaps even getting in outside help to assist you with things, you know, relying on advice of, of other people, which is always a good thing to do because two heads are better than one. I see there being here a reward for your hard work and dedication and your skills and knowledge are going to move you forward. Good outcomes for career, business, projects and and really practical matters in general, I think, because it's sort of discs relates very much to practical matters and for me in particular standard of living if you look at the image on this card it's um, it includes within that relationship I think although not exclusively relationship life generally is going to be in balance I think you see this image here there's one two three there's a balance there's a natural balance that's going on there and I think that you will have the ability to stick with things and to overcome any obstacles. In March, it's going to be a time for you to raise your sails and let the wind fill your spinnaker because you will be moving ahead with great, great speed. I'd have this in mind, and it is to say, I am now ready to give everything and to receive everything. The yin and the yang. It is blessed to give, and to give you will receive. Now, here's the Knight of Cups. I'm going to leave this image here because you get to see the, the total image that way, even though the, so it's up close. Now, what can I say? Esoterically, knights are, well, they're represented by air and cups of course are the suit of water and air and water can well they can have an interesting sort of a um, a, a, a mix with each other I think they can lead to well quite um, steady and still ponds or they can lead to raging seas and so there is the ability for there to be some conflict or some turmoil during this period, none of which necessarily has to be bad. It can well be good. Now, this could be a person that's in your life during this time. 
And if it is, now it's cups, so it could well be technically a water sign. But of the water signs, I think it's liable to be a Scorpio. And I also think it could well be a Libra that's important to you here. I see here, this is the airy part of water. And water and air kind of strengthen each other, but they're neutral. So in elemental dignitary rules, they're... There aren't any particularly strong elemental contradictions in his makeup. But with him, with the element combined with what I see as Scorpio energy coming into it, it can make him quite an intense character. As a fast river flows, so does he trying to get the most out of life as possible. Now, as a, as a by the way, I will mention that these court cards, although I'm referring to it as a he, they can also be the opposite gender. It's just that it's convenient to refer to him as a he, given it's styled as the Knight of Cups. What's important is not the gender, but rather the energy that comes up out of it. But I'll continue to, to speak of him as if he's a, a he. Now, I think he's a young man of subtlety, secret violence, craft. Um, he's like an artist who is sort of calm on the surface, which actually marks an intense passion deep down. The ability to detach is something I'm also getting here because I'm getting Libra energy around him. That's why I say it's that Scorpio and Libra energy. That's why I say that there could well be Scorpios or Libra around you that are important at this time. But this is like Libra air sign quality to detach um, and, and to detach himself from the heavy, intense, controlling emotio, emotions of Scorpio um, it shows a, within him, I think, a sort of a, a poise and control of the emotions. But being detached and cool can often be a front for insecurity and fear. Usually the, the feminine asks the masculine to go deeper into his feelings, to join her in the place where the two meet as one in relationship. This guy has no conscience, and um, I think he can inspire fear because people don't really understand him, I think. Yeah. He cares intensely for power, for information, and and his own aims. Look, if there's ever any uh, doubt that you might have about him, you can be assured that um, it's resolved by this, and it is that he looks after number one, and everybody else comes second. He may uh, appear calm, as I say, but it masks a passion and intensity which can make him quite volatile at times. This is a person who has a lot to offer, immense ability, but someone who can't really be relied upon. His main responsibility, as I say, is to himself. He can be secretive, hiding his deepest desires, very much getting the idea of the arts and music around him. Uh, someone who can shed insight into the lives of others and do a good job because they've usually done it all themselves. I mean, they have lived life. At worst, I think it can be cruel, selfish, and reckless. Yeah. There is, however, I think a message for you here, and, and it's this, that you should accept your sexual needs and passions and live them out with awareness and you'll discover a lot about yourself in the process. Give totally to the experience and observe your self in it. Spend some time each day perhaps visualizing yourself, your desires without getting lost in them. And I'd have this affirmation which is, I now live out my sexual desires. This makes me more vital and fulfilled. 
It certainly does. Now let's have a look and see what's coming along in this one here. We have the three and it's the three of wands. Now again as I say the three of wands is something which well, first of all, Wands is a fire suit, right? Wands is a fire suit, and three is about extension. It's about uh, gestation. It's about um, increases in things that you have. So what there is going to be at this time is that there's going to be a tremendous growth for you during this period. Now, the astrology of this card for me is really quite straightforward. It is the sun in the second decan of Aries, that 31st of March to the 9th of April. I call this card the Lord of Established Strength. Now, the, the thing is, I see Sun in Aries. What's even more fortuitous for you is that, that in ordinary astrology, the Sun is also exalted in Aries. And so this placement is very favorable. Aries enjoys a challenge, and Aries suns are happiest when their lives are moving forward and they are active. Yeah, I really do see a lot of uh, balance here for you, a lot of harmony, a lot of really effortlessly moving things along. I think what happens now is that you've now got the direction that you needed before. You've had the ideas, you've now got the direction where you need to apply yourself in order uh, for you to be the best and to be of service to the world. I think... This is this is looking inside and outside, I think, as well. I'm getting with this eye, looking inside and outside with integrity, honesty, and no compromises. So, it might also be a good idea to check the integrity uh, of somebody else uh, during this period. Probably an Aries, I would say. It is important to operate from a place of integrity before making a decision during this time, and to have clarity of mind and heart before actions are taken. And that way you'll bring about the best result. And unless you have clarity, then don't act. You're under no obligation to act. If you do have clarity, now is the time to act. This is a particularly, particularly fortuitous card for you to have. I'd say I have the power and virtue to reflect and to know. And if you are not centered and feel doubts lingering within, then um, go back to the drawing. But well, don't go back to the drawing board. Just see what what is the source of those doubts, and um, you have a plan B or plan C as we come. Then we come into June, which is the ten of discs. Now. Tens of di ten of discs. Here it is. Well, you've got that there, so I'll just leave the image. The ten, of course, is is usually the um, the portent of an end of a cycle. But in this case, I think it's actually um, far more important than that. And and I think that this is is boding well for your economic situation. For me, it's Mercury ruling the third decan of Virgo, the thirteenth to the twenty second of September. Now, in ordinary astrology, Mercury rules and is also exalted in Virgo. So you'll have good communication skills, which is Mercury, and good organizational ability, which is Virgo. So there is success and abundance with this card. I'm getting richness, abundance, wealth, prosperity, possibly an inheritance. I'd be inclined to spend a small amount of money on the lottery, um, you may well have a lottery win. Um, I'm definitely getting a supportive and well-knit family around you. And if anybody's involved in a family business, I th see this as being particularly successful and harmonious at this time. Look, um, there's somebody there is going to come across so much money that money is almost going to lose its importance, I think. And I certainly hope that it's you. It, it can sometimes mean someone who's accumulated riches in their life. Now remember, for me, this doesn't just mean money. It's actually far broader than that. 
It, it can mean someone has accumulated riches, but, uh, but nothing else. You see, no heart, no spirit. Um, but uh, what it is saying is that this is uh, great for your standard of living in general, and you'll be feeling comfortable, and your material world is going to be in good order. We then have this beautiful card, the Two of Discs, and isn't it a striking looking image for you, the Two of Discs? The Lord of Harmonious Change, Jupiter ruling the first decan of Capricorn, 23rd of December to the 2nd of January. Now, Jupiter, of course, is, is the planet of um, great um, good luck, good fortune, philosophizing. There is, I think, a sense here where I feel movement, flux, having some ups and downs, growth through change, multitasking, something of a heavy workload for you, I think, during this period, but I think it's something that you're going to enjoy doing. And I think that you may even see something as uh, providing something of a welcome change and, and moving with a better flow in your life. This change is bringing you into balance um, and your well-being is going to improve. It's almost in, Jan in uh, July, a period where I would say to you to kind of go with the flow, really. Um, Constant changes in fortune can sometimes make things difficult to get things off the ground, but there's also nothing kind of financially or materially set in stone at the moment, so the world is really your oyster, and it's reminding you, I think, to make sure that your day-to-day -day affairs are in order. This is a card of good management of your practical affairs and finance. It might sound like a bit of a drag, I know, but getting on top of bills and chores is as important as enjoying the, the more... Um, well, uh, enjoyable activities in life. I'd say that I trust in the harmony of my life and in the flow of my life. Every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. And so you are indeed. Now, in August, we have this, the Four of Cups. Now, this Four of Cups is interesting. What is the, em the energy that I'm getting here? I'm looking at the numerology of Four, and the Four relates generally to stability, to foundation, to having things put together and put together well, almost like a castle area here. The Lord of Blended Pleasure, I call this card. It's the moon in the third decan of Cancer, the 12th to the 22nd of July now. In ordinary astrology, the moon rules cancer, which is, I've got to say, probably the only great strength of this card. I think that the underlying message of the card is that you want to be emotionally fulfilled in a deep way, but perhaps during this time, you're not going about it in the right way. Now, the moon is associated with the principle of flux and change, and your own emotional states may be shifting like the phases of the moon. Um, I think what we are also seeing is that you should be careful of just settling for what you have, perhaps not appreciating what you have, maybe wanting things that you can't have. Um, they're the types of feelings that I'm getting because there's this seashell. Here's all this emotion that's out there, and there's the seashell, which kind of looks stranded on the shore, even though the shell and the creature within it are an integral part of the sea itself. Possibly some sort of boredom or dissatisfaction in your life. There's a period where I think you might be sort of saying to yourself, look, I'm too familiar with my environment. Um, I hope you're not going to be go looking at material things for happiness, you know. Um, sometimes there can be rifts in relationships that can open up, and rather than closing them together, we can kind of just paper over them by going out and looking, for, uh, looking at material things for happiness, seeking a temporary pleasure as an escape for a feeling of discontentment. Um... 
But of course that doesn't work because then you've got to come back and deal with the with the relationship that's in some sort of disharmony, I think. It might be time to have one of those conversations with the people. Now, it doesn't just have to be a, a partner in a, in a relationship. It could also be in a business setting. It could be in a workplace setting. But it's going to turn out well. It's going to turn out very well. Because this energy which is coming through here, which is the Knight of Discs, is indicating great things. And it's also going to be rewarding you for the, the hard work that you put in your life. Now, I mentioned before, did I not, that knights are the element of air, effectively, and discs, of course, are the element of earth. Well, earth and air in elemental dignity rules are enemies of one another, and so there could be some sort of a conflict in the nature of this person in your life um, who could well be a Taurus, all right? It could be a Taurus, the prince of the chariot of earth. The other person I'm getting around here, energy is Aries. So this could relate to you or to another uh, Taurus or to an Aries. But there could be some conflict going on, maybe internal conflict. But I can say this, you will be energetic, a capable manager and a steadfast worker. You will be slow to anger, but watch out if you are driven over the edge. Uh, people will see you as being very reliable. Now look, it's possible that you may be quite materialistic during this period and focused on material things. Look, there's nothing wrong with material things. A lot of people, you know, like other mystics um, say, oh, only, only look in that realm. I don't. I, I actually see the divinity as living here and everywhere, but certainly here on earth with us and in us and, and in all the things that give us joy and pleasure. And material things do give us joy and pleasure. This is a person who in love doesn't rush in and... Um, leans to the cultivation of it over time. I think there's a person who generally tries a good example, tries to set a good example to others, and by utilizing traditional values, I think. Now, the energy that I'm getting from this, and this is not you, but maybe I think this is something that you just want to just have at the back of your mind to be careful of in the pursuit of material things at this time, is that. I think that this guy, not, notwithstanding his depiction here as, as a little kid, um, can be perceived by others as, as lacking in emotion and as someone who makes no understanding to make ideas which conflict with his own. Um, but you will be very adaptable to circumstances and turn them to your advantage with a slow, steady, well thought out plan. You'll be putting a lot of effort into practical things at this time, and you'll be interested in design and building things. But again, that design aspect is coming back, which can relate to not just bridges and freeways, but things which do with beauty, which can be beautifying yourself or your surroundings as well. Uh, I think that this is going to be a time when you, you really do start to take responsibility for your life and you begin to become focused. You might be actually very good at sport during this period, I think. Um, but be careful, though, because some people might think that you, you are lacking in emotional warmth. Um, I think that this is a time, in a nutshell, when you are going to be very goal-oriented and want to sort out the material side of your life, that is to do with health work things, all those sorts of things that are tangible to you. And if you do do that, well, what is going to happen? Well, let's have a look at this card, because this, it's funny how they, you know, there's no coincidences in these. The six of discs, numerologically, I love the number six. It's very balanced. 
it speaks to me of um, an area of divine emanation prior to the materialization of space and time, which metaphorically one might refer to as Christ consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Now, I'm not selling religion, but what I am saying is that there is the ability of the human being to to raise their consciousness so as to be able to apprehend, or very nearly so, the divinity. I call this card the Lord of Material Success. The Lord of Material Success. It's the moon ruling the second decan of Taurus, the first of the 10th of May. Now, the moon in ordinary astrology is also exalted in Taurus, which is a good sign, but the moon, as you know, is transient in nature. And it means that any success that you have could well be short-lived. But what, what would you expect? I mean, success is not a continuum. I mean, a success is a point. You reach success and things go on. You have another success. But this is all about success. Very androgynous uh, image here of the woman and half snake, which is very phallic symbol, which represents the male to me. So... I think that um, we can say also that with you, the, that the moon likes nurturing and comfort, and, and you, in Taurus, well, you like material things, don't you? So the moon and Taurus are well suited for bringing material success. Now, what else do I get around here? I think that um, we can say that uh, there is success, generosity in both ways, a lot of paying it forward I see with you, which is a great karmic thing to do. Receiving a financial boost, I think it's possible that there'll be the grant of a scholarship to uh, someone. If people are dealing with the welfare system, I see a favorable decision in relation to welfare that's there. Material success and what you consider to be financial prosperity possibly an opportunity to become involved in a profitable adventure, a reminder for you to remember the successes in your life and build on these. And you will have a desire for success. And of course, um, what they're saying is that you should uh, therefore be willing to take risks, be committed, trust your intuition, and uh, things will go great for you. Well, what a great year it is for you so far. Oh, I wish I had cards like this. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune. This is for November. Things are moving along at a great speed for you. This is a good year for you, I think, Taurus. Now, let's have a look. The Wheel of Fortune. Can we see her? Yes, there we are. Wheel of Fortune. Midrakana, number 10. Well, what is it that we can say that this card is means for you in the context of this spread because it well excuse me while I just um, destroy my room here this um, in the context of this spread these other cards here and coming just at the end and with the astrology that they were and with this coming up, I'm getting a lot of Virgo energy behind it. Okay, let's get into it then. It means for you, I think, you know, following on from that um, Lord of Material Success there, I'm seeing abundance, prosperity and fortune for you. And how good is that? It's Jupiter, I see, the great planet of Jupiter coming in. Jupiter, which is about expansion, philosophy, but Jupiter, which is about really just plain good luck. This is the lord of the forces of light, and uh, Jupiter with the element of fire there. It's... Um, it's it's uh, it's uh, a, a a determination, I think, of you to for you to de turn life into a more positive and abundant direction. You may well find that you have here also unexpected opportunities and windfalls coming to you. So we've really got 
an idea, I think, of a connection between benevolence and, uh, and emotions and, and what it takes to give the individual happiness and pleasure. And um, I just have these words coming through to me now, which is, I turned around three times in every way, and always I came at last unto you. For you are hidden in everything I love, in all that I desire. Yeah, I think luck, chance, opportunity, winning, some ups and downs, a lot of fate coming in here, uh, chance of life-changing things coming along, I think. Be ready to act on any unexpected opportunities, because think also that, like this flower, when times are good, stay centered, because this wheel can, ch can change in any direction. One thing that we can be certain of in life is that change is ever present. If you're in the center, it doesn't matter which way the wheel changes. So stay centered. Change is about to happen. Now, you may need to alter your present course or change things around to set the stage for the right outcomes to come into your life. If you're struggling against the course of life, then you kind of become struggling against uh, this wheel and you can be crushed underneath it. But at the center of the wheel, despite the ebbs and flows, you will never be shaken or broken. So if you stay centered to your truth, you will get through hardship. <coughs> Excuse me. I really have this thought in mind, and that is, I am now ready for the miracle of my life. I am a prosperous individual. I am flexible in times of change. I enjoy manifesting internal abundance externally. Abundance which created me is what I am. That is the case with you of all the signs. Finally, December, and isn't this interesting? Here we have the Hermit. Now, the Hermit is usually, I think, depicted as something of a bit of a religious figure, but I don't get that, um, I don't get that feeling at all about this Hermit here. I see the Hermit as being someone, um, for you, who is representing, um, well, first of all, it, it's Mercury ruling Virgo, and I see Mercury exalted. I call this card the Prophet of the Eternal, the Magus of a Voice of Power. A lot of Virgo over here. I think that you could well be a mentor during this period, that you'll love learning. There'll be some sort of an illumination from within because you'll be thinking about what's going to be happening next year. And there's something of a divine inspiration, wisdom. Again, there's words are coming through. I am alone in a cold, grey, desolate land. There is no other to be found, no companion to ease the going. Yet you are the light I bear, even when I don't know it, and the strong staff that supports me. Yep. You could well be um, having some sort of feelings of getting away from a situation in order to get a better view of it. And that's a good idea, because you've got to have a plan for what's happening the next year. Do you know, if you don't have a plan on how to go from A to B, you don't get to B, ever. It doesn't happen. You've got to have a plan. I think you could well become aware of something that you were previously unaware of. I'm getting very much that energy. And I see you also... Mm, having some period of alone time, um, even despite the the uh, the hustle and bustle of this holiday period that uh, we're coming into, it could well be some alone time that's there. Um, you won't be compromising on your values. I think you might also want a significant relationship or none at all. The need to complete things from the past before moving forward. I think you'd be quite gifted at manual things, good at organizing. Could be a time to start thinking about looking after your body, sprucing up your surrounding. And I think, again, you're going to be called on to be a motivator or a mentor for others. I'd have this um, feeling in mind, this thought in mind. 
I enjoy the feeling of completion and resolution. I will not compromise that which is important to me. Well, this looks like it may well be your best year yet. That's the way it is for you. Well, there you go. That's it. Your 2020 annual reading done. I tell you what, I think that this is going to be your best year ever. I really do have that feeling about it. I've got to say that um, the, 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 the vibe that's come out of that reading of yours is very, very positive, very positive, and, and uh, you should be looking forward to this year. By the way, um, I, I just want to say also that you've been fabulous, you've been great, and um, in fact, you, you, you've been brilliant, and, 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 and you've played your part of this exercise uh, with to perfection, and I thank you for that. Uh, look, really all that remains for me to say is this, that you are a legend, and I hope I see you in my monthly readings. Subscribe if you want, but check out the, uh, the videos anyway. Until then, bye for now.